if you are a filmmaker and you want to upload directly to Amazon, you cannot do it for subscription-based, the SVOD. What do you love about Amazon Prime? I love that I love that Amazon, like, you know, sometimes that people think I suffer from Stockholm Syndrome defending Amazon, but they opened up independent film distribution in a way that it has never in history been done. Like Amazon Prime made it possible for an independent filmmaker in Indiana making a $6,000 like backyard horror movie to distribute their film and have it on the new release wall, like right next to Fast and Furious. You know, that is cool. And, and initially, it was paying pretty good. I mean, I, I don't remember what the what the first rates were, but I, I think it was like 15 or 20 cents an hour, which some people say like, like that sounds low, but you can make a lot of money at 20 cents an hour on a streaming platform, on a platform like Amazon, where there's like whatever 90 million users watching. You know, I, I, I think it was incredible. I think they made mistakes. Um, you know, and I, I think the biggest mistake Amazon made was there was n no curation. Now, you know, I, I keep talking about how great it is that there was no gatekeeping or, you know, no curation, but I think there needed to be a base level of curation. Like they were taking anything and, and things that weren't even movies. Like, you know, they, they were taking shorts. There were people putting up like YouTube style videos. Like, and I, I think that all of that inappropriate content is what really like started the, the downfall of it. Some people will say that it was always planned, that they were always going to get rid of Indy, and, and maybe they were. But I think it at least would have held on longer had they not been putting out YouTube videos. And, you know, there, there's a filmmaker that I know that was putting his stuff right from YouTube onto there and, you know, calling them documentaries. But they were not. They're like vlogs like I do, you know, on there. And I would never put that on Amazon. But I think that's what led led to it. But I mean, like I owe a lot to Amazon. It, it, it opened up my eyes to what like independent filmmaking could be financially. And, and now it's kind of gone, but other things have popped in, you know, like to be. What are three tips a filmmaker new to Amazon Prime should know about getting their movie up there? Well, so three things people should know about Amazon. The fir first thing is, is that it's not what it was. So now if you are a filmmaker and you want to upload directly to Amazon, you cannot do it for subscription-based, the SVOD. The only thing that you can do is TVOD. And it, I think now you can do documentaries again, but for a while they weren't taking docs at all. But I think for TVOD now you can still submit, you know, narratives or documentaries and you'll make, you know, I, I think they pay like 50% of the rental or the purchase price to you. So it sounds pretty good. And if you have, if you have a title that, you know, has some legs, you know, that, that is good, that might have some stars, you might do good with TVOD. But the first thing to know though, is that you can't, you know, you can't just upload and be free with Prime anymore. You have to go through a distributor or an aggregator and and they're pickier than they were. So like like, you know, some chintzy things are still getting up, but not not like it was before. So it's harder um, Then now. So let's say you're going through a distributor and aggregator and you, get, and you get up there. So what are some things that you need to know in order to do well there? I think filmmakers need to like wrap their heads around I'm trying to, so what I, where I learned this from was doing YouTube. So when I started growing my YouTube channel, I started watching all these YouTube growth experts, right? People with, you know, three, 400,000 subscribers. And they're talking about, this is how we grew our business. And they start talking about looking at analytics. They start say, thinking about hooking the audience early and keeping them engaged and giving the audience what they need. And I started thinking about my features like that. You know, so like, you know, like now I would be much more hesitant to do like, you know, a movie that had an opening like slow burn 20 minutes 
Like I, I would I, I would be hesitant to throw that up for something that's gonna perform on a streaming platform because in today's day and age, you know, they used to say like with screenplays, you have 10 pages like, you know, to hook the person. Not anymore. You got like you got like 60 seconds. Like and if something is not happening that is gonna engage the audience early on, they're out of there. So like you, you like you front you gotta front load some good stuff. You know, so I, I think about that. Um and then I, I've talked about, um, you know, uh, like engaging in, in the algorithm. So, you know, when you're typing out your description and even if you're going through a distributor, nine times out of 10 filmmakers are still writing their own synopsises and stuff like that. So start thinking about that. That is your first like thing to start thinking about like SEO, you know, search engine optimization. So like using keywords. And, and and you want it, and you need to be able to blend those keywords into your you know sentence and paragraph so it sounds organic and not clunky. But you know you're thinking like I'm doing a uh, I'm doing a horror movie with you know zombies and vampires, right? Zombies versus vampires. So like you want zombies in your description and, and in a couple of different ways. You want like zombies, undead. Um, you know try to think try to think of like three different terms for like zombies and then try to think of maybe three terms for vampires and then try to find a way within that paragraph to work as many of those in as you can you know and because these like amazon there when people search like these keywords come up and they're they're matching you know audiences with their keywords so it's you know it's important so th think about that um and then um you know, think about where you're gonna, what what kind of movies like do better on Amazon. And Amazon isn't a super like like indie, indie friendly thing now. So like if you are doing an indie film, the indie films that are gonna do better on Amazon are gonna be stuff that have a little more of a like, like a mainstream feel, like a little less niche, you know, or, you know, they have, and no no extreme like violence or sex or drugs like you really gotta it's all it's really weird because i remember when i started i used to always say hey if you're gonna make a ten thousand dollar movie you might as well just go balls to the wall and throw it all out there and not worry about nothing this is the time to be punk rock not necessarily <laughs> if you want to if you want to make any money off of them because you know and then now that uh, AVODs are starting to take off a lot more than the subscription-based platforms, you know, stuff like Tubi or IMDb TV or even YouTube. Now those, uh, you know, you're getting paid from the advertisers and the advertisers have to be matched with your stuff. So the advertisers that pay the best are usually more for a quadrant -y, you know? So like, you know, on YouTube, for example, you know, if you have a documentary about cannabis, you're not going to make anything because you're going to you, they're, they're going to 18 like restrict you and the you're going to have a really low CPM and you won't make much money. So you need to you need to think about those things, too. But if you have a, a narrative about a dog that saves Christmas. Perfect. You're Perfect for right. Amazon. Christmas dog movie. <laughs> oh, man. You know, a, a friend of mine's actually doing a, a Christmas uh, pig movie right now. Oh, great. And it's doing very well on, oh, it, nice. on uh, YouTube, actually. Yeah. Very cool. What about um, cover art? Uh, most important thing uh, for the marketing of the film is the cover art. A lot, a lot of people will say trailer. Nope. Cover art. Because, like, in the, in the streaming, like, that is the thing that gets people to stop. It's the art. It is if you're going to spend money on something like for marketing, spend it on your cover art. Like if you're a decent graphic artist, but you can come up with, you know, a thousand or, you know, five thousand or whatever, pay the money and get a pro one sheet done if, if you can. You know, I, I so I'm a, I'm a decent graphic artist. And for my first probably year, like doing docs, I was just doing all my own. I was like, this is good enough. This is good enough. This is good enough. And then, you know, one day I was like, you know what? I'm going to try. I'm going to, I'm going to hire somebody out. So, you know, I hired a graphic designer. I think I paid 600 bucks for it and it did way better than my average stuff. So then from then on, everyone, I put the money into it. 